My life is good. I write was hood. I might get to it. Not out the woods, so bro, I got to do it. Be a monster. That's why my mind. Welcome to Three Con Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today we're gonna to talk about Dark Side of the Ring and the Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Very interesting Dark Side of the Ring. Um they've gone from Dark Side of the Ring to let's just talk about obscure characters. I mean, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is very obscure. I don't know anybody who ever asked for a documentary of any kind. On Brunus the Barber Beefcake, but here we are, okay? <laughs> In the year 2024, we're highlighting guys like Buff Bagwell and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. So, let's talk about it since we're here. Since we, you know, some people watched it, some people didn't. Um, it was actually pretty good. Uh, you learned a lot about old Ed Leslie, but there ain't much to learn. Once he met Hulk Hogan in the 80s, he pretty much just followed him around for 50 years, thereabouts. And then they had an argument about what nobody knows. And that was it. But there were things that were not mentioned in Dark Side of the Ring, as usual, that I think are worth discussing. Notably, that Linda Hogan, the former wife of Hulk Hogan, claimed that Brutus Beefcake and the Hulkster were in a homosexual relationship. Now, it is... Uh, that was divorce talk. And divorce talk is a very mean thing. But um, we'll get into that. And we'll try to figure out why the Hulkster won't talk to Brutus Beefcake. But first, we'll talk about this. Art. There's an article that was out there that I think perfectly encapsulates the career of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. It's called The Bizarre Convoluted Career of Wrestling's Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Um... It is very clear that this guy, Jim Vorrell, who wrote the article in 2015, is not a fan of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Um, I mean, his wrestling career can be summed up best by Hogan went there and brought Brutus along. So there is a, a astonishing number of times where Brutus is mentioned to be Hulk's brother. So whenever uh, Hulk Hogan changed his name, Ed Leslie changed his name too. So when they were starting out as Terry the Hulk Boulder, I believe um, Ed Leslie's name was Eddie Boulder or something to that effect. When it became Hulk Hogan, he became Dizzy, Dizzy Hogan. And um, pretty much every time, you know, Hogan moved on, Brutus was brought there. Bischoff called him the Hogan Tax. Nobody really wanted him there, but... If you wanted Hulk, you got to have Hulk's guys. And one of Hulk's guys was Brutus. One of the humorous things in the dark side of the ring is when Greg Valentine, the former tag team partner of Brutus Beefcake, uh, said that it would be unfair to categorize Brutus's career as basically being the guy who holds Hulk Hogan's bags. And then almost immediately, Ed Leslie says, you know, it was an honor to be the guy who held Hulk Hogan's gimmicks, which is absolutely hilarious they were mocking him as much as they were celebrating him like everybody knows it was ridiculous that this guy who had never done anything in his entire career the guy was around for 30 years supremely over babyface super over as a babyface because he had you know perfect 80s coked up promo style and a really over the top gimmick but he never done anything nobody cares about Bruce the barbecue cake not really you know he was just one of the many colorful characters on Vince McMahon's WWF, like, you know, Coco Beware and all this kind of stuff. He still was very popular, but not, nobody knows why, you know? Um, so he really starts separating himself from Hulk. When Linda McMahon, they said, came up with this gimmick of Brutus Beefcake. Now, this is not entirely true. As maybe Linda came up with the Brutus part, but the name Beefcake was something that Brutus had used before. Um, apparently, he uh, was in a couple of action movies, straight to DVD action movies, and he wrestled under the name Baron Beefcake um, at one point. Um, so when he came to the WWF, he gets a push as Brutus Beefcake. It is another one of those Chippendales kind of gimmicks. He's in the tag team with Greg Valentine for a couple of years, wins the tag team championships. When Greg Valentine goes his own way, Brutus is then 
uh, turned babyface, then given the name The Barber. Now, in the uh, documentary, you see Brutus talk about how much he hated The Barber gimmick and how he thought it was stupid. And, you know, it took for Hulk to calm him down and tell him this thing could work, brother. All you got to do is put people to sleep and cut their hair, brother. It'll be great, brother. And that's that's what made him decide to keep the gimmick is that, you know, the Hulkster talked him into it. So there's that. There's that. Then we talk about the parasailing incident where he destroyed his face, which is probably the reason we even have an episode of Dark Side of the Ring, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, is because of the parasailing incident where um, somebody's knees, I believe it was, destroyed his face and you know, turned him into absolute sloppy Joe for a couple of months. And um, while they spent a lot of time on this, uh, and because this is what they really ultimately wanted to get to, I feel like, you know, this is one of those things that's been talked about a lot, you know. Um, he mentioned th the barber shop, which they didn't spend a lot of time on because, you know, uh, the WWF didn't really put a lot of effort into it. Even though there was, of course, the most memorable event being the breakup of the Rockers took place on the barber shop, but there was nothing really to get into with that. Uh, when Hogan left, Ed Leslie left too. He went to WCW, then he had a cycle of gimmicks, such as, you know, the Butcher, the Zodiac, the Booty Man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and this guy actually main event at Starcade, which I was surprised they didn't mention. Because for a lot of WCW fans, I know Bischoff seems to disagree. Um, Starcade was the premier wrestling event. It was their version of WrestleMania. And their version of WrestleMania was main evented by Hulk Hogan versus The Butcher. A hilarious version of Brutus the Barber Beefcake played by Ed Leslie. At these, I think it was Starcade 94. I, bro, I looked that up and I was like, I cannot believe you surprised WCW went out of business when Brutus the Barber Beefcake is the main event of your show against Hulk Hogan. You know, this guy who is an absolute jabroni. But, you know, another funny bit is Brutus talking about all the different gimmicks that he had throughout his career, especially in WCW. And he says he felt like Mel Gibson or something having succeeded with all these different gimmicks, which got everybody to laugh at and how ridiculous he is to compare himself to Mel Gibson. For starters, none of these gimmicks worked. That's why he kept changing them. You know, like they, none of them worked. They all sucked. Now, the disciple was interesting because he looked so different. And I'm not even going to hold you up. I did not know the disciple was Bruce the Barber Beefcake. I thought it was Van Hammer. I legit thought it was Hammer. Um, because he looks like Van Hammer. He had the same body type and everything. So that just goes to show I didn't, my WCW history is in the toilet. <laughs> I could have guessed it was Brutus B. Kick, I really put some thought into it, but I never saw the disciple and was like, oh, I wonder who that guy is. And then I've never known that he worked the match either. So I probably should watch more Nitro. <laughs> I definitely got to watch more Nitro, but, uh, they put over how much effort, he, he was um, put into him changing his body. And of course, when WCW went out of business, everything fell out of the, the bottom, fell out for him. And he was forced to go get a regular job as a toll collector in Boston, where he ended up getting busted for cocaine. Now, in the dark side of the ring, they said it was basically BC powder, which is headache powder. Similar to it, you know, my mama likes standbacks. It's the same thing. It's like a little, like crushed aspirin or something like that. It comes in a baggie and uh, you toss it back and you swallow it down with some water or something like that. It's real disgusting. So his wife, Missy Beefcake, is explaining that all these, these little baggies of BC powder is just headache powder. Um, other people said it was cocaine, but it made the news because some woman who was being neurotic and paranoid thought it was anthrax and <laughs> you know uh she absolutely blew the lid off this whole thing um so he also had we also talk about uh missy hyatt uh who uh, apparently brutus speedcake is very close to we're very friendly with that you know missy hyatt says that um, ed saved her when she was suicidal 
But when you look at Missy Hyatt and Missy Beefcake, my goodness, bro. They look like Slim Jims with makeup on, all right? They are so shriveled, so old. The plastic surgery is so obvious. It looks, they look terrible. These people look terrible. Please, young ladies, please consider that you may get old one day, all right? It's not good. All right, so let's get into the issues between Hogan and Brutus because that's what they spend a lot of time on at the end is they had a falling out. Now, Brian Nobbs of the Nasty Boys is in this thing. Brian Nobbs and Nasty Boys are also Hogan's guys, by the way. Um, he had no comment on why Brutus and Hulk fell out, but apparently it was issues over Brutus's wife. Now, I did a little bit of digging, and uh, they played the audio of Hogan said he had to cut Brutus off. Uh, there was some talk in the documentary about Brutus's wife saying she didn't want Brutus to go fly 300 miles for $300 or something like that. So it seemed like he was being ungrateful when it comes to the money, even though Hogan was getting them booked for all of these shows and stuff like this. And maybe the wife was becoming getting in the middle of that. But I also read that uh, Brutus Beefcake was writing a book. This was in 2017. And to help promote the book, Ed Leslie tweeted out, working on my book, which is fastly becoming a tell-all. Hold on to your bandana, brother. It's about to get real. To which Hulk Hogan responded, got the bandana glued on tight. Get a good lawyer, brother. And Brutus responded, get a good lawyer? What the f Bandana glued on? Brother, loosen your hair extensions. They're making you paranoid. So... They started, they had, a, they had a bit of a spat. Apparently, Brutus was going to write a book. I, apparently, I don't know if the book ever came out or not, but I haven't heard anything from it, so who knows? Hard to believe that Brutus was going to tell any stories that were going to damage Hulk more than damage his career has already been damaged and the divorce and everything. But uh, that seems to be one of the reasons why they were at each other's throats. Now, they did patch it up afterwards because Hulk Hogan inducted Brutus Beefcake into the Hall of Fame in 2019. There's also pictures of them in 2018. But then afterwards, Hogan says that, uh, quote, another guy I traveled on the road with for four years was Brutus Beefcake. Him and I had a falling out. We had a bit of a falling out. So him and I don't even talk anymore. I mean, there's nothing to talk about. Uh, he says it has a lot to do with the lady he's married to. Nothing really to do with him. So I'll pass on explaining why him and Brutus had a falling out. So that's really sad that, you know, whatever this woman did, and this woman is pushing for them to continue being friends. She wants them to drop the heat and still be friends and all this kind of stuff. But apparently it's, you know, the Hulkster is not feeling it. You know, maybe he should, maybe he should find some of that good Christian mercy and forgiveness in order to uh, patch things up with his friend. I find it hard to believe that you're friends with a guy for 40 years. And you're not friends anymore. Because he married to somebody you don't like. As if, you know, they're attached at the hip. You know, 100% of the time. Now, maybe, you know, there's other issues there. But I couldn't imagine sacrificing a 40-year friendship. And not talking to a guy I've known pretty much my entire life. Because of some woman. I find that hard to believe. It's got to be more to it than that, I would imagine. But um, speaking of some woman, Linda Hogan, believe it or not, uh, she ended up getting sued by Brutus the Barber Beefcake and by Hulk Hogan because she put out there that uh, Brutus and the Hulkster were having sexual relations. She then, of course, after she got sued, she took that back. And uh, she says, when you're mad at and you're going through a divorce, you say things you just don't mean. That's what she said. It's very awkward, you know, for men to be friends and pretty much every male relationship that goes beyond the superficial. Like these guys have been friends again for a really long time. So they must be gay. This the, the same conversation that we ended up having about Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero is because guys are friends and they, they just must be gay. 
that's the only way men can be friends is if they're having sex with each other. And um, I take offense to that. I don't I think that, you know, people can have real friendships, genuine friendships. And um, it seems goofy to me that that would be the first thing people would go to as a way to try to hurt your feelings is to say that you and your friend are gay. That's odd. That's extremely odd. But here we are. She ended up, of course, like I said, apologizing for it. Hulkster, you know, denied it. Brutus denied it. They both threatened to sue her and all of that went away. But ultimately, that was pretty much the episode of Dark Side of the Ring. It was mostly about his relationship with Hulk Hogan and the parasailing incident. Not much about him being the first guy to beat Mr. Perfect or, you know, anything like that. He really had never achieved anything. You know, this guy was a main event guy, you know, in WCW under a really stupid gimmick. But it was only because he was wrestling Hulk and Hulk trusted him. It wasn't because he was actually any good. So what are we spending so much time discussing? <laughs> you know, like there was an hour of this. There's not much to talk about. But you know, let me know what you guys think. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. Tell me what's worse than learning all that you led to believe was all horse crap. They distort so question as if.